Hi, I'm Bob with Wolf Ridge. Right now we're getting ready to go on another road trip, this time with the 28HO high output log splitter. First things first, I have not used this machine in a while, so it has been sitting here with the gas valve shut off, and I'm going to leave it off because we are transporting it. But my log lift has drifted down, which is normal on any of our horizontal or even the vertical log splitter. Over time, that log lift will drift towards the ground. So you can see right now the log lift is almost touching the ground, so I certainly do not want to tow it. But there's a trick. If you don't want to start the engine, I've got the gas already off, so I know it's not going to start if I crank it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up the log lift valve into the up position and I'm going to crank the engine. And as I do that, you can watch the log lift go up. There we go. So now I have the log lift up in a nice position for towing. And if you're going to tow really long distances, I would say to double check this, you know, when you stop for gas, make sure that it's still in that up position. But you can also, if you don't have electric start on a machine that has the log lift, you can hold that valve and just pull the rope a couple of times without having to start the engine just for a minute and then shutting it right back off. I have both jacks uh, tight on the ground right now just to keep this thing from rolling. So I'm going to bring this back jack leg up and put it in the transport position. There we go. We'll loosen this, get it off the ground, pull this pin, rotate, and I'll put the pin back in. You can put the pin in left or right or top to bottom. I like putting it in top to bottom because any vibration, it, it can only basically fall back into the down position. Then we'll come around to the front and you can see I have the new um, optional wedge holder on this machine. So we've got the 12-way wedge sitting up here and this is the other jack. I This is already all the way up right now. So we're going to pull this pin, do that, and then we'll swing the tongue into transport position. Put the pin back in. And you can see I already have, I do have the optional sorting table extension on this machine for transport. Put it up front because you're going to add more tongue weight to the machine, which makes it easier to tow. And uh, instead of having that extra weight out back, I do have the optional LED light tower on it. And I'm going to want this for later today, but for transport, I'm going to pop it off. So I'm going to remove this pin here and pull that out and then just take this straight out. This is how it connects, just the SAE two pin plug. And I'm gonna put this in the bed of the truck for the ride up there. Now I'm just going to lower the other jack, get this to sit on here, make sure I've got the cords and the pin and everything out of the way. So, we're on the truck. Take our pin, put it through, put the hitch pin clip through there. We've got our safety chains and it's always good practice to cross your safety chains, hook them up. The idea behind crossing the safety chains is that if this was to fall, the safety chains would act as kind of a cradle to keep this from grinding on the ground. Then we've got our four pin connector we will hook this up. I'm going to pull the splitter forward then, and then we will check the lights. This jack I'm going to put into the transport position. I got to bring it up just a little more here. And these jacks you could take completely off for transport too, if you wanted, just like that. But I'm going to leave it on here because I don't want more stuff floating around in the bed of the truck. This machine has the optional LED taillight package on it. So you can see them down here. There's one, there's one. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the parking lights and then I will hit uh, left signal, right signal, and then hit the brakes. Lights work, hitch is all hooked up, we're ready to hit the road. All right, I'm on two lane county highways. I'm going 60 miles an hour. Honestly, you can barely tell that that splitter is back there. Maybe just a little bit of extra bounce from the truck. I am in a half ton Ram Eco Diesel. Fuel economy is already really good with this truck, but uh, pulling the splitter 
for the last 45 miles in 49 minutes of time. So I'm average between 55 and 60 miles an hour is 24.8. And um, to be fair, this truck would probably be getting like 27 or 28 miles per gallon normally on a, on a stretch of road like this. If I was going 70, I think I'd probably be down in like the 20 mile, 20 mile per gallon range. But um, the fact is this thing pulls really nice. Um, I'll pull up the camera here and show you what it looks like behind the truck. And you can see I have, we've got the four and the six way wedge way out back on the main wedge and the 12 way is on that optional wedge holder accessory. That gives us a little bit more tongue weight with this machine. But the nice part is even when I go back and forth with the steering wheel, it'll sway and it'll come right back. And uh, even if I go up to 70 miles an hour, this thing still pulls really nice. And um, set my cruise set my cruise at 70 and then we'll take a take a look back at the camera again and uh, if I just if I give it a little bit of a of a swerve it straightens right back out and the really nice thing one of the reasons that this thing pulls so nicely and is so quiet back there is because this does have the suspended road axle on it um, and the highway tires so this is something you get when you get into the HO the SHO uh, the VS the VSC they've all got the suspended road axle on them which makes towing just a dream. All right, we just arrived at Whiskey River uh, with Brandon yep. and your helper, Tyler. Tyler. Tyler's here and the other helper, the dog. Little Samson. Yeah, so we're going to get the 28HO unhooked from the truck and um, show you guys how easy it is to get it set up and ready to split wood. All right, so I'm chalking the wheels and uh, then I'm going to undo the pin and stuff here and undo the chains and undo the wire, and then I will put the jack down. Crank this down until we're off the truck. I think we're barely off. I, I, I maxed out on the jack, so hopefully I got enough room. Oh, oh perfect. I pulled the pin, I'm gonna slide the drawbar over Put the pin back in, and now I'm gonna take the sorting table extension off the storage position. Take these pins with me. Slide this on back here. Then we'll put this jack down. Hey, you wanna help me with this? No? Okay, crank this. Give it a shake, should be good. And the last thing I'm going to do is pull this pin out of the log lift, open it up, put this back in place for the time being, if I can see what I'm doing, okay, lower the log lift down, I have both wedges stacked here so we're going to take off the six way. I'll set it aside for now and we're ready. I think I probably could have towed it with this on, but I thought, eh, it's pretty easy to take off. So I'll just take it off. But I want to show this later in the evening. So there we go. We're all set up. We're ready to split some wood. And behind me, Brandon has made a special box so that we can actually time how long it takes to make a full cord of firewood. And we're going to be doing a bunch of different sizes. He got diameters probably from what, eight to 18 14, inch, yeah, 14 yeah. inch. Okay. I see a couple bigger ones there. Yeah. Uh, so Brandon's going to load the machine. I'm going to run the machine and then Tyler is going to stack everything. And we're going to see how much, uh, we're going to see how long it takes to do a quart of firewood. Thank you. 
All right, we just got done running this thing. I think it was about 32 minutes. We'll get the official number soon. What we did was we went on Facebook Live during that whole splitting session. So if you want to see the whole splitting session unedited, you can see everything that happened um, on our Facebook page probably a week or two before this video came out. If you go back in our posts, you'll find it there. But behind us, we have the full cord rack. Um, again, probably right around a half hour with two guys at the splitter and uh, then Tyler was stacking the stuff. So yeah. we made pretty good time with this. And um, I'll show you closer because just so it doesn't look like a third of a cord, you can see we've got three rows here. And we ran the six-way wedge for all of it. We've got the sorting table extension on here. You can see all of our kindling and debris and stuff like that fell through this sorting table extension. And it's actually got some nice saleable kindling here or something that can go in when somebody buys a bundle of wood. And now we're gonna have a little more fun. We are going to take off the six-way wedge and put on the 12-way wedge. And to do that, I'll pull this pin and I will lift this straight off. And I did put the optional wedge holder on this machine. So we've got the 12-way sitting up here and we'll pick it up, come back around. Drop it on there and then we'll put our pin back in and we're gonna split some with this 12-way. We got four nice rounds on the log lift and the splitter, 12-way wedge. We're gonna run these out. Red oak. Red oak. Season. Yes. Yeah, you got square split stuff. There's small stuff. There's medium. Some kindling. There is some chaff. Yeah. This gets some complaints from the viewers, but the people that actually use the machines know when you put when you put um, multi-way wedges on, this is something that you get. Do and a box wedge, you'll get a bunch of it. It's yeah, it's so many different angles that you're that you're splitting the grain up. But if you want to make a lot of firewood in a hurry, 12-way is kind of where it's at. So we just got some apple wood that he had in this uh, IBC tote over here from some enormously tall and big apple tree. He says it's really old and it's cut kind of weird. So this might, this might be a little bit of an issue. I think I'd rather put it here though, because this, if I put the crooked cut against the push block, that's gonna be more stress trying to get it through the wedge, but yeah, we're gonna try it. Crooked. Yeah, Probably. we're gonna try it through the 12 way wedge and see what it does. Yeah. And if it plugs up, we'll show you how to unplug it. Might not.
<laughs> well, we'll try those. Okay, so this is some nasty stuff that we just ran through here. And honestly, like, this is the most stringy stuff that I have put one put through one of these yet. Um, it's actually kind of lightweight too, but it's it's freaking hard. Look at how much it got like smashed before it started to split. So you're telling me that it's hard to split with an ax and somebody will watch this video and say they're faster with an ax. So Tyler is gonna show us if that splits right in half. Okay, don't, don't sandbag, okay. <laughs> That's a good hit. Four hits. Okay. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a two-way split now. All right. Now we got to get to the four-way. <laughs> I'm in pain just watching him. Oh. That is nice. some, but that is some hard splitting stuff. That, that went way easier than, it, yeah. than the other ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like he, he's literally. Got, he has like a six minute, minute video of me just way up <laughs> Was it a different axe? The same axe. The okay. Same axe, All right. It was, it was a bigger piece than yeah, that. Yeah, and just not it had knots in it. Like you see that one in that IBC toe. It's got that knot sticking out of it. Yeah. It's just like that. Once you get into that with that axe. Yeah. It's not touching. Yeah, and I think it was wise to just take that one out. I I, I don't know. I just you know. Yeah, <laughs> that one's pretty. It's six way for sure. Six way. Yeah. I think tomorrow morning we're gonna put the six way on and split that whole okay. IBC toe. All right. And I think that it'll handle it just fine. Yeah, I think so too. It's just, uh, yeah, this is, like I said, this is supposed to be on the 35 ton, and this is supposed to be straight grain, nice stuff. So we're putting like absolute worst case. And yeah, a lot of, you know, a question we get asked often is like, this is only 28 tons. And like people go to the box store and buy a 35 or a 40 ton, like a box store splitter, no, would not do that yeah. through a even four way probably, you Honestly. know? So there's a lot more to it than just what the cylinder's rated for, you know? Definitely. So it's the next morning. I left this splitter here overnight. Uh, we, we went up north into Duluth for the night and came back and let, uh, let you guys do some stuff this morning with it. What'd you yeah. get split? Yeah, we got all of our applewood split up, which was, that was super naughty. Yeah. Well, yeah. not naughty, yeah. just hard What'd to What'd you split. use? Did you use four, six way? Uh, we used the six way okay. on here. Okay. Yep. And processed all that. It's like an IBC tote worth. Okay, and cool. And made pretty small splits, just firewood for restaurants. Yeah. I guess we, we don't really do that market. Yeah. But. And your oak round pile yeah, is gone? Yeah, and then oak round pile's gone. Um, and uh, yeah, we pretty much got everything done that we had bucked up. And I know that yeah. you've seen these before. You came to the factory, you were at the Frenzy, mm -hmm. um, but you never had a chance to actually like run one. Right. And actually be part of like production with one. Right, right. So I've seen them at shows. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's great. It's great. I'm impressed. It's super easy to work with. I said it in one of the videos that we shot this morning. It's like, I don't have to move at all. You just stand right here. It's, yeah. As long as someone's feeding the logs, you have access to all your controls. Yeah. You can reach if you have to resplit. How tall, how tall are you? I'm five, uh, six foot. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. about what I am too. Yeah. So like this yeah. this table height, I it's, feel is reasonable too. Yeah, I know a lot of stuff out there you have to kind of crouch and that takes mm -hmm. a toll on a guy at the end. Yeah, of the we day. ran uh, a processor recently and it, I felt like I was moving around all of the time to do everything. And it's sure. just nice to be able to like stand in one spot and just crank through some wood. So we did a good solid cord this morning. Plus we stopped a bunch to shoot videos and stuff, so. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'm impressed. It's a great machine. Cool. Thank you. I'll have to make this trip again. I left a yes. fire ring here for you to play with. Yep. And I'm looking forward to see, well, I'm looking forward to seeing if you, if you don't follow Whiskey River already, you need to follow Whiskey River on YouTube and Facebook. I will make sure to put links in the description of this video to Thank send you. you guys over there because he makes all kinds of cool content. Um, yep. not just firewood. He's got this point of that thing, that, that log boiler there, which is insane. Yeah, I know you got a bunch load, of top yeah. load boiler. Yeah, we so have a lot of short form videos. A whole bunch that. of content on that, and then yeah. of course the stickler, the old uh, wheel mounted yep. cone splitter. Yeah, um, and then we sell axe handles. Yeah, so yeah, and I have them. some of your axe handles yeah. from a friend Matt that we were both friends Mutual with. So, friends yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. So, check us out. All right, I want to thank you again for the opportunity. Hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Yes. 
Yes. If you guys have any questions on the Wolf Ridge products, if you want pricing, videos, tech specs, our dealer locator, and more, check out the website, www.wolfridgemfg.com. As always, I want to thank you for the support. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on what's next at Wolf Ridge.